Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's Michael the Maven. Today, I'm going to be answering a question from one of my students, Kim. She is a very talented bird and flight photographer, and she sent me this image and said, Michael, what in the world is going on? My camera cannot focus when I have birds landing in you know, certain types of vegetation like this, and it happens so quick, I can't really change my focusing square. So I am going to address that right now. For those of you who are interested, I have a free tutorial on the R5 and the R6 already on YouTube. It's about three hours long. Check it out. Check out my Facebook group for the R5 and R6 because as these questions come in and I anticipate others will have similar questions, I'll make videos about it and we'll just become a great resource for working out some of these kinks and problems in the event of a true bug. Uh, I'll make a video about it as well. And in the past, Canon has addressed this. So let's talk about tools to the task. Think of the R5 and the R6 as a toolbox that has multiple tools in, in, in that toolbox, and we want to apply the right tool for the right job. So if you ever try to change a tire without a, you know, the wrench for the lug nuts, it is not easy, but as soon as you have that wrench, okay, it's, we can do it. And so we want to apply our focusing tools to the right subject matter in order to maximize the potential of the camera. So there is a more beginning video for customizations. I'm gonna point out a couple of these right now. Keep in mind that if you are a beginning or an intermediate photographer, a lot of this is probably going to be on beyond the scope of what you need to know right now. I would consider this more of advanced or even expert camera customization. If you are shooting birds in flight, obviously they're moving. We want to have our servo auto focus mode on, right? The focusing cluster that I recommend is on the far left. It's the face with the tracking box. It's the auto focus selection. So the idea on this is that the camera is using the entire frame to try to find something of contrast. It's looking for something dark. So when we have a bird in flight, you have to apologize for my drawing, but I'm not, I'm not the greatest artist. The camera can recognize in most cases, not all of them, but usually fast moving birds are not really cooperating in, you know, at a zoom lens. It's really hard to get them with a single square. It's almost impossible. So you can kind of see it right here. We get these four corners and this is where the camera is looking for this area of contrast. And it's locating the bird and we can take great pictures. I have seen tons of amazing images just this alone. For those of you who like back button focus, the way you're going to set this up is to remove the focusing from the halfway shutter button depression of our, our shutter button. So we're gonna come into our customization screen. So I'm gonna set this up real quick as I demonstrate this. And I'm going to turn this on to metering start only. So now all of my focus is happening right here. It's a very popular way to shoot. So here's the problem. Bird in flight, shooting, 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 great, having a great experience. And all of a sudden the bird lands. See, I'm a terrible artist. And in some cases, people want to use eye detection. The bird's gonna be close enough, why not? Why not use eye detection? So what we can do is set up our camera. We're gonna come into our auto focus, eye detection, and we're gonna tell it to look for animals as a priority. And we don't want to fumble with changing our focusing clusters to, you know, eye detection. We could come in, yeah, we can, I guess we could do this. We could turn this on or off, but we don't even, we don't even want to mess with that. We just want to jump to eye detection straight away, right? So again, we're going to come into our button customizations, Q, customize buttons. And we're going to put that right here on the star button, which is the auto exposure lock flash exposure lock button because I don't really use that button that I don't think most people use that button that much and we're going to look for the icon with the I and the AF on it now the reason we want that over something like just the I is the I is toggling this feature on and off for that auto tracking mode so just select this one this is going to be the way to go It'll work for people too. I mean, you can obviously customize this any way you want if you're a portrait photographer or whatnot, right? So let me demonstrate what's happening here now that we have eye detection. It's already picking it, even on my drawing, look at that. So here's eye detection, boom. 
And if the bird jumps up and flies away, I can just jump back to my regular focusing and it's going to detect it back and forth. Even if, for example, I was on a different focusing cluster, let's say single focusing square, I could jump back and forth between single focusing square, it's looking for that area of contrast, and then eye detection. So we're jumping back and forth between two clusters. Now this is where the problem comes in, is the bird lands in some bushes surrounded by vegetation, and the camera doesn't really know. Let me put this back on to our auto zone. So as I engage the focus, it doesn't really know precisely where, where that bird is, or maybe the face is too small and it can't get eyed. You see, even just with slight changes, the camera doesn't know what this red spot is, right? If I jump to eye detection, it's gonna be looking for a pattern in the bushes, and it might find a pattern in the bushes of what it thinks is an animal's face, and it'll focus on that. And this is why I, I talked about the tool to the task is that even though the bird is the same bird in each of those three instances, because its movement and its surroundings have changed, you should consider it as entirely different subject matter because that motion will determine, you know, which focusing square should be used. And her question was, you know, I, I can't get to eye detection. It was on the branch for a couple seconds and then it was gone. It was a beautiful shot and I missed it. This is the recommendation that I am making to my bird in flight and wildlife recommendations in this third instance. We're going to customize the depth of field preview button. It's a button on the front of the camera. Point it out real quick. Right here, you can see it. It's where your right ring finger, right next to where your right ring finger would rest. And the default for this button is set up to give, to stop the aperture blades down to give us a preview of the depth of field. What I want you to do is to switch that to direct auto focus method selection. Now, if you don't want to push to select and you just wanna push and hold, you can make it work with this other one, but I like this one for now. I just know there's other ways to do it. And what this is going to allow us to do is to toggle our focusing clusters by pressing the depth of field preview. Now there's a problem with this. We have eight different clusters that we're cycling through, and when a bird lands on that vegetation, we may have a split second to get it. We don't wanna to have to trip through all these, right? So we're going to come into our menu. We are going to come over to limit auto focus methods. And in this case, I am going to turn off everything except for my face with tracking in my single square which we cannot turn off by default i'm going to check off all those boxes if i do not press the ok button it will not remember it and it will frustrate you as well as it has me right I hit ok tap my shutter button now we are in a situation come back out where we can jump between three different focusing types very quickly so let's go through this again here comes the bird, it's flying around, right? Boom, there we go, bum, 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 we got it. Now the bird lands. Now I'm gonna jump over to eye detection. Maybe I'm not close enough, well, it's getting it. There it is, eye detection, great, perfect. Now it jumps over to these bushes and neither the auto tracking zone is getting it, neither the eye detection. I wanna focus on that red dot, no problem. I touch my depth of field preview button. I have a single focusing square and I can engage. The bird jumps off, starts to fly, I push it again, and I'm back to my regular bird in flight mode. So this is why it is a great way to set it up this way. It can be very fast. I know many of you are gonna say, Michael, I don't want my camera set up like that all the time. You know, I do portraits. Sometimes I prefer the people, eye detection. You know, I, I use those other focusing clusters all the time. No problem. The, the home run on this is that if we come into our yellow tab, we come into our custom shooting modes and we register the settings under C1 is the camera will remember the menu items we've set up, even on the purple tab, you know, in, even the orange tab, it will remember those in the custom shooting mode. So we're just gonna come in here and hit okay. So now you have a bird in flight mode at C1 and you can come back to your regular shooting modes an aperture priority, you can shoot, you can come back here, I'll demonstrate, watch. Come back to 
subject to detect, people and animals. So now you're back to your human eye detection, right? So watch this. I'm going to flip the knob over to C1. There it is. And look, the menu remembered that we want animals there. So the C1, the C2, and the C3 are set up for high-end, advanced, custom focus settings, cu button customizations, any way you want to set up modes, your picture styles, most of the stuff on the Q menu, your white balance, you know, your, whether you're shooting, just tons of options available. Keep that in mind. Your menu options are remembered in those custom profiles. And Kim, that is the answer that I would give you. So now you have three different ways to change your focusing squares very quickly. And that bird should not get away from you again. Now I am going to give one last bonus little focusing customization tip just for those of you who are interested is that if you come in to your one shot and uh, obviously this is for cooperating types of subject matter, but there is a really cool customization. I've pointed it out in some of my other videos. It's right here on page four, lens electronic manual focus. So if you're dealing with an RF lens that is electronic, uh, controlled for man for focusing this feature if you turn it on to the third one will allow you to jump to manual focus after you push a shutter button halfway down so let me demonstrate this real quick here's our single focusing square i'm going to engage focus and holding it down it, can, it works the same with the halfway shutter button depression rotate your lens manual focus ring and it jumps in automatically so you don't have to fumble with the magnifying glass you can, you can jump in, focus manually, take the picture. So Kim, I hope that answers your question. If you have questions about your R5 or R6 and you want to know how to do certain things, we would love to see you on the R5, R6 group on Facebook. Check out my free tutorial on YouTube. And we even have the advanced crash course available now for both of these cameras. I'll put those links in the description. Hope you guys are doing well. I'll see you next time.